Hey guys, Clough here, and today I have a very simple data pack to solve a problem that you may not know you had. And so this problem involves servers that have scoreboards that they want to make persistent across uh, name changes. So something you may not know is that a player's score value is tied to their username. And so what this means is if I change my name to something like Cloudy, or if my name was Cloudy and I changed my name to Cloud Wolf, then essentially when I leave the server and come back or I join the server again with a new name, the scoreboards will still be for Cloudy and not for Cloud Wolf, which is my current name. And so that is a problem on some servers where let's say you have a scoreboard for level and it's an RPG server and you have a bunch of scoreboards, maybe level, coins, all this kind of things, and a player joins with a different name, they have now lost all their progress on your server, they're mad, they quit, they yell at you, whatever it is, right? So this data pack seamlessly and very easily solves this problem with pretty high efficiency. So all you have to do is download the data pack named player name tracker, make sure that the first folder within it is a data. And then once you go into that folder, go into PNT, then go into functions, then go into new name, then go into score list. Then this function will be your home for adding all the scores that you want to make sure carry over. So it is a little bit annoying that you have to do this for every score you want to carry over, but that was impossible for me to do even with the power of macros. So as long as you are using a version 1.20.2 or above, this data pack will work. And essentially what it does is you just copy these lines and change the word to the scoreboard you want. So you just change this to level, change this to level, and change this to level and everything will work just fine. Now, for those of you that are using this, you probably are a little bit into commands or pretty advanced already. So you probably mostly get what's going on here. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the current player at S's level equal to the macro, which contains the string of the old, the previous name, and I'm setting it equal to their level score. And then I am resetting that previous name's level score just so that there's no uh, players that change their name to the name you used to have, and then they steal all of your progress, <laughs> which would be a very rare event. But this accounts for those black swan events. So what I'll do right now is I will show you what happens when a player named Cloud Wolf who was used to be known as Cloudy, leaves the server and joins again. So as you can see here, my Cloud Wolf, it says Cloud Wolf name changed, and then it says demo, and you can see Cloud Wolf has 69, where Cloudy used to have before. So the same person has the same scores that they had after they've changed their name. Success. So that is it for this. If you want to hear a little bit more about how it works, then I will get right into that. So the way this works is actually pretty simple. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to store a list of players with their UUID. So data gets storage PNT players. And this list will contain the pair of data values, the UUID and the name. So the name will be the name that it first saw when you were first on the server, and the UUID will be something that never changes even if you change your name. And so all this does is when a player reconnects to the server, it runs these two functions which obtain the player's name isolated as a string, which is more complicated than it seems because in order to do this, you basically need to use uh, selectors so that just like when you're using tell raw, you use a little selector to tell you what the name is. Well, the thing is, if you use that selector criteria with the tell raw stuff, then the player's name is not going to be alone. There's a lot of additional data and that would be, you know, inefficient in terms of data storage costs to store a 226 character string for one name. And so to do, to fix that, I basically use this little manipulation to count the characters and figure out how long the name of the string actually is, and then actually grab the string on its own. And so I just isolate the string with these two lines to figure out what the player's name is. And then I store that onto the data storage. So for new users, it appends to the storage. So it adds a, an element to the list. And for old users, it just, when the player relogs, it grabs their current name, then it grabs the value that was saved, and it grabs the value it was saved based on using a macro to index the list. And then once we've grabbed that name, we just do a little comparison and MBT test. And if that MBT test is true, meaning it was able to overwrite the old name or the stored name with the current name, then we had a name change and we run the new name function. 
And inside the new name function, it just simply runs a couple things. So it runs update, which basically puts the new name into the data storage. And then it runs score list, which basically does what we said before. And it copies old, your old scores. So a very simple data pack, which really only has two ticking functions, uh, two ticking scoreboards. And these ticking scoreboards just check for if somebody has left the game. You can even run this at a slower tick rate if you wanted, and it would still be fine. So if you're really crazy about performance, but it's literally two scoreboard checks. And if those scoreboard checks are true, then it's really just going to run a couple pretty expensive commands, but only when a player reconnects. And then a couple additional more expensive commands, but only if a player changed their name. So very, very efficient. In terms of uh, things on your world, the load only runs once and the load summons a text display at 000, which you can change these coordinates if you have a different force loaded spawn chunk. And then it just has one singular scoreboard. So you're really looking at one scoreboard, one entity and two ticking commands that check score values. And that is the entire load of this data pack. And in addition to the large data storage, it'll generate. So if you are satisfied with that, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you would do differently or if you have a potential use for this because I don't really know what everybody's projects are. Um, if you want to see more little tools like this, let me know which ones you want to see next in the comments and uh, leave a like if you thought this was useful and I'll see you next time. Peace.